There's this one moment in Bochi the Rock that's been living in my head rent-free for months now. It's not the biggest or flashiest scene, just something that hit me like a truck. And I just want to talk about it for a bit. Bochy the Rock originally aired in fall 2022, and yeah, yeah, I know, I'm kind of late, but this was one of my favorite things from that year, and this is my channel, so I get to choose what we're doing. The show from Cloverworks is an adaptation of the four-panel manga of the same name by Aki Hamaji, serialized in Manga Time Kirara Max since December 2017. Hitori Goto, nicknamed Bochi, is an extremely introverted and self-conscious girl who picks up the guitar in an attempt to become popular. After honing her skills in middle school but failing to make any new friends, she enters high school and through a series of coincidences, becomes the lead guitarist of the newly formed Keisoku band. Completely unprepared for the opportunity but determined not to make the same mistakes again, the story follows Hitori's journey as she tries to become the person she always wished she could be. Like I said at the start, this is one of my favorite shows of 2022, hands down. Let's just get this out of the way right now. The show is absurd. It goes all out in ramping everything the manga does to the most extreme. Now, a bit of a disclaimer, I haven't read very much of the manga myself, but from what I have read, it's clear that this is not a wholly faithful adaptation in the strictest sense. Like, the plot is pretty much identical, but it's not always presented in the same way. And that's good. This is a prime example of changing things in adaptation to preserve the spirit of the source material. Jokes are expanded on, the delivery of them is sometimes altered, and new ones are added to take full advantage of the new medium. Hats off to scriptwriter Erika Yoshida, chief animation director Kerorida, and series director Keichiro Saito for their work here. I so desperately want to know who thought to include a low-poly 3D model of Bochi T-posing and crashing into a wall because it's... Oh, it's perfect. The presentation is really what sells the show at first because at its core, this is a slice of life coming of age story where the gimmick is that these people are in a band. And I say that with a lot of love and respect. I know tons of effort was taken to depict the music. I mean, come on. The animators actually matched the visuals to the sound. They made an album for the show. That's awesome. These guys went so far above what they actually needed to. But when it comes to the story itself, Accurately portraying the realities of starting a band was not the main priority. I'm just gonna come out and say it. It's not very realistic in that sense. That might be a spicy take, but just hear me out. These are a bunch of amateurs with not a lot of experience, but despite that, they sound really good. A little too good, if you ask me. Yeah, there's the one time they fall apart on stage, but let's be real. That's only because the narrative called for it. The band is as good as the story needs them to be. The scenarios they find themselves in also feel a bit scripted, for lack of a better word. Like the show does the whole fake audition thing. Nijika's sister using an audition to motivate the band to take practice seriously when she always intended on letting them perform. I called out this exact thing as being unrealistic when I talked about sound euphonium way back when. To be crystal clear about this though, these are not critiques, just observations. I'm not even saying it's impossible for a band to sound this good right out the gate or for them to find themselves in a position like they were with Nijika's sister. Although, now that I think about it, nepotism in the music industry is pretty realistic, but that's beside the point. In the end, this is a show where the main character explodes in the street, phases in and out of reality, and turns into literal dust. I don't really care about realism here. There has only ever been one time in my life when a show completely shattered my immersion, and that was when The Flash showed the binary of a computer virus only for a biologist to zoom out and reveal that binary shaped like DNA because, and this is real, it was an actual virus. It looks like a virus. Well, yeah, obviously it's a computer virus. No, 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 scooch. Oh. It looks like an organic virus. I'm sorry, what? I bring all that up to say, 
I get the impression that Bochi the Rock is trying to be more true in spirit rather than true to life. There is a balancing act going on here between being interesting and reasonably plausible. Author Aki Hamaji has said as much herself, saying in an interview that she didn't want to bog down the story for casual readers with technical jargon they wouldn't care about, but also didn't want to completely alienate the people who do have experience playing instruments in the process. Apparently, she even started learning bass and drums when working on the series, I assume as research, which is really cool. The band and their performances operate on sort of musical theater or movie musical logic, at least that's how I see it. There's this old adage in theater that goes something like, when you're too emotional to talk, you sing. When you're too emotional to sing, you dance. And you can sort of apply that logic here, minus dance, sometimes. <laughs> Take that performance at Starry again when Bochi starts the next song. That moment would feel right at home in a musical. It's essentially her bursting into song. What I'm getting at is this. How the band plays, the music they produce, isn't really about showcasing their growth as performers. That might be how the story justifies it, but that's not the point. What you hear is more a reflection of the internal state and emotions of the group, which is similar to how musical numbers are generally used in theater. That's not unique to Bochi the Rock though. It's pretty standard for this kind of story, so I tend to approach most shows like this in the same way. But like with any other way of storytelling, there are strengths and weaknesses to people wearing their hearts on their sleeves and expressing that via song. You either have to choose the right subject material for that or be really clever about the execution because it is very easy for that sort of thing to come off as, at best, unbelievably obnoxious or, at worst, just wildly inappropriate. Psst, for any theater kids out there, that's Rent. I'm talking about Rent. Yeah, so a quick edit, I'd also like to say, YouTube apology video? Probably not a great time to break out into song. Anyways. So, are the musical elements in Bochi the Rock being used for something meaningful? Does it even make sense to tell that story this way? To me, the answer is yes. And whether it was by accident or by design, I think Hamaji managed to pick one of the better topics to do that with. Bochi the Rock is a story driven by strong personalities. Nijika, Kita, Ryo, Hitori, they all have their own unique traits. The leader, the extrovert, the recluse, the introvert. As an aside, I love that you can see those traits manifest in how the girls hold themselves when they play. Bochi constantly looking down, Ryo casually swinging around, stuff like that. I cannot stress this enough, I think the animation team did an awesome job. As appealing as I find all these characters though, Bochi is definitely at the center of it all. Everything about her is designed to scream relatability to a very specific kind of person. However, I know she's not to everyone's tastes. I have a friend who can't bring themselves to finish the show because of Bochi's well, everything. Her shtick doesn't speak to everyone, and it doesn't need to. But for the people this does speak to, oh boy, does it. <laughs> I feel personally attacked. Now, does this mean everything she does is realistic? No, of course not. I mean, I don't think anyone avoids talking to sales clerks by means of furiously headbanging to music at them. But if you have ever tried to accomplish the same thing by putting on a pair of headphones, even when you're not actively listening to anything, that's basically what it feels like you're doing. Just like with the band, Hitori's portrayal is more true in spirit when it comes to being an introvert. But here's where I want to draw a line. Being an introvert is not a bad thing, and the show is actually really good about not making introversion itself the thing Bochi needs to get over. What the other band members do is pretty illustrative of what I mean. Bochi is ridiculous. The things she thinks and does are, to put it mildly, kind of out there. Nijika, Kita, and Ryo react to all of that. What they don't do is judge or shame Bochi for any of it. Maybe this is me reading a bit too heavily into things, but there seems to be a lot of intentionality here. Because the easiest thing to do would be to make Bochi's outburst the butt of the joke, for the rest of the band to point and laugh entirely at her expense. They don't do that though. 
The band knows Bochi generally doesn't feel comfortable around other people, and they totally respect those boundaries. They don't really give her a hard time about things they know she doesn't want to do, to the point where Kita feels genuinely terrible when she thinks she's put Bochi in a position that she doesn't want to be in. That framing does a couple of things. Firstly, it doesn't come off as mean-spirited that way. The show probably wouldn't be as enjoyable if the main character it's trying to make people relate to is actively shamed for being the way they are. But secondly, it gives Bochi a lot more agency. Her decisions are, ultimately, rooted in how she thinks and feels about herself. And through this framing, the other characters' opinions on Bochi's actions are not used to push her one way or another. If Kita is allowed the space to be peppy and outgoing, then Bochi should be allowed the space to be more private and reserved. Because introversion isn't a problem. In fact, we see it portrayed fairly positively in Ryo, someone perfectly content with doing things by herself, going to cafes, buying records. It really seems like the story goes out of its way not to equate introversion with a lack of self-confidence, which is really the struggle at the heart of the story. People tend to tie those things together. It happens in a lot of media. I mean, how many times have we seen the meek and quiet character turn into an outgoing social butterfly by the end of a story? Extroversion is a bit of a shorthand for confidence, because these stories kind of assume that it's the default. That might be true for some people, but it would be a mistake to say everyone functions like that. And if you take apart the jokes in the show, you'll notice that a lot of them are built on Bochi making that exact mistake. Yeah, I know, there's nothing more riveting than listening to someone explain a joke, but there is a trend of these jokes centering around Bochi's anxieties about not being an extrovert, and or her trying to be more of one when she clearly isn't. You don't need to say anything when you walk into a cafe, Hitori. You can just walk inside. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Hey, Taisho, yatteru. Bochi might not be comfortable around other people, but she is way less comfortable with herself. This is not a story about her becoming an extrovert. It's about her finding ways to express herself and her emotions in a way that's comfortable for her. If you were wondering why I think the musical-like elements work in the show's favor, this is it, this is why. Fundamentally, the series could have had another gimmick. It could have been centered around cooking or a sport or pretty much any other activity. But a story about a self-conscious introvert struggling to express themselves to the people around them, being put into a rock band, or expressing yourself via song is the entire point. I think that's pretty good. More than anything, what Bochi needs to learn is how to accept her introversion because it doesn't actually matter all that much. The funny thing is, she already knows that. The entire reason she picked up the guitar was because someone on TV said, a band is a place where even introverts can shine. Bochi started on this journey because she wanted to shine as the person she is. But she spends most of the time in her band trying to be anything but herself. And of course she does. Because that's what you would do if you thought you were broken for being the way you are. A lack of self-confidence isn't unique to being an introvert. It can manifest in anyone, regardless of what they're like. But this moment is where those two things collide. It reveals so much about who Hitori is and how she sees herself. For someone who says they picked up the guitar to become popular, it's kind of wild that she isn't more upfront about the fact that she is a popular cover artist on off-brand video hosting site that definitely isn't YouTube. But from what Hitori says here, it seems like she heard the line, band is a place where even introverts can shine, and took it to mean something else entirely. Because nothing about how she thought she would turn out reflects that statement in any way. The vision she had for herself after doing everything she did was more outgoing, more sociable. It's someone more like Kita. 
There's nothing wrong with that, of course, and I'm not saying Hitori couldn't be that if that's what she's comfortable with, but this is a matter of misguided assumptions and expectations. Hitori doesn't just want to be all those things, she thinks she's fundamentally broken. This moment is what can happen when an introvert believes extroversion is the norm. And if that's what Hitori believes, then the phrase band is where introverts can shine isn't about being yourself, it's about transformation. This is where I can become something better, where someone like me can change into something more. To shine as an introvert effectively means to stop being one altogether. That's what Hitori wanted for herself when she started on this journey. But after years of practice, all she got was good at guitar. Ask anyone who plays an instrument and they will tell you the same thing. Practicing will only make you better at playing. Don't go into it thinking it will do anything else. A lot of beginners end up a bit disappointed because of that. Because there can be an expectation that playing an instrument will do something it can't. Hitori expected her guitar skills to make her a different person, hoping that the better she got, the more she'd change. So when that didn't happen, it's easy to see how that would tank her confidence. How could Hitori view herself as anything but a failure if, even after everything she's been through, she thinks she's still the same broken person that she was at the start? Now. I can't speak for everyone, I can only draw from my own experiences, but growing up, and this is kind of embarrassing to admit, I was someone who took way too long to order at a place like McDonald's. I would stare at the menu, making sure I really knew what I wanted, repeating that order over and over in my head before getting in line. I did all of that because I didn't want to talk to the cashier more than I already needed to. I am exactly the kind of person this series was made for. I play instruments too, so that's also a plus. Like Hitori, the person I wanted to be back then, the vision I had for myself, was much more sociable and outgoing. This wasn't just a version of me I thought was better, it was one I thought was normal. The kind of person I thought people expected out of me. There's nothing wrong with trying to step out of your comfort zone. People can change and evolve over time. But there is a difference between thinking of change as improvement and thinking of it as repair. When Hitori picked up that guitar, it seemed like for her, it was the latter. I picked up hobbies, did different things. I made bad music, drew terrible comic books. I even tried doing magic tricks for a time, which is something I hate thinking about. Like Hitori, I hoped doing those things would fix the parts of me I thought were broken. But no matter what I did, I still couldn't live up to who I thought I should be. And it's difficult to be confident in yourself with a mindset like that. I know these are fictional characters that don't exist. None of this really matters. But I love that someone like Hitori is treated with so much care and respect in her story. As a person that relates to her so deeply, it's comforting to see her friends laugh with her whenever she inevitably does something stupid. They go along with it sometimes. They encourage her to say what she really feels in her lyrics. And they don't pressure her into becoming someone she doesn't want to be. But what hit me hardest in this absurd and dumb story was watching this pink-haired introvert desperately trying to fix what they see as broken, and admitting that to a friend that loves them and sees nothing wrong with how they are. I ended up living through moments like that a few times, so I can only imagine how much seeing this would have meant to a younger version of me. It still speaks to part of me, even now, the part that still worries about who I am. I've grown older, but some things about me haven't really changed. I'm still the kind of guy that hesitates to ask for help at a store. I second guess texting friends to hang out. I'm still a bit self-conscious when it comes to small talk because honestly, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing sometimes. Countless stories out there focus on miraculous transformations with characters that are unrecognizable by the end of their journeys. As far as I can tell though, 
Voji the Rock is not one of those. And it doesn't have to be. There is value in having a story where the main character doesn't change all that much, and I fully expect Hitori to be just as awkward and cringe by the end. But she does change a little in this moment. A subtle shift from hoping that playing guitar would fix her, to wanting to use those skills to make the best music she can. She's still the same Hitori. She's still weird around other people. But now she's comfortable enough to express a bit more of herself through the band's songs. It will still take time for Hitori to gain more confidence. Her insecurities won't go away overnight. But as someone who is trying so hard to fix herself, this was the first step she needed to take to realize she was never really broken from the start. As always, thank you so much for watching. I ended up having to move in the middle of this, so if parts sound a bit different, that's probably why. If you want to keep up with what I'm doing, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Threads too, I guess. I'm at it's Kyle Robes. Links in the description. These videos take tons of effort to produce, so if you want to help support and grow the channel, consider sharing this video or throwing some money my way on my coffee page or with a super thanks. Any support is greatly appreciated. I was also thinking of starting a Patreon, maybe? Possibly with direct downloads to the music I use. I'll still put them on YouTube, it'll just be for easier high quality downloads. I don't know if that's something people want, but if it is, let me know down below. But that's it from me. Thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate everyone who stops by. And I hope to see you next time. Until then, shoots. <laughs>